you want a backup solution that works for your uh, MacBook, your Windows machine, your Linux box, doesn't matter what it is, it's free and you can centrally manage it all from a web page. So pretty awesome. And it's completely open source too. So you don't have to worry about the project just disappearing. Well, I got your backup I'll be covering today, which is pretty awesome. I use it all the time and we're going to set it up on my studio PC because we've already set it up on my inside production machine, which is Windows. I set it up on my laptop, which was using Debian, and uh, we could even set it up on a Mac, uh, which is kind of awesome as most commercial products don't support all these operating systems. So let's go ahead and make me a little smaller. Oh, oh there's my mouse. Oh. There it is. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, let's uh, shrink me down and get over to here. Oh, that's looking good. All right. So this is my desktop PC, a real original name. I know. Blasphemy. I should probably change my host name, but whatever. I could tell you something about security or privacy, but uh, I'm just lazy and I didn't feel like changing the stock default. <laughs> And then we got my laptop and you'll notice a couple things. We have a full image so we could actually restore directly from uh, an image so we can boot into live media, flash it on there and it would take everything block for block back on that system. And on my Linux one here, you'll see not supported. Now Linux, I'm not too keen on big images because it's Linux after all. Most of my dot files and the actual configuration that goes into the system uh, I don't necessarily need an image, but it is supported as long as you're using LVM and you need XFS or EXT4. For some odd reason, BetterFS wasn't supported, so maybe they'll add that in the future. A couple limitations on the Linux side of things. Uh, but let's get to adding this one and show you how easy it is to do both a Windows client. We're going to use a Windows VM I use for gaming, and we're going to do the Linux one. Let's start with the Linux one right now. We're going to just say, okay, let's download or add a new client. This is what we're going to put uh, the host name of the client. So if we don't know our host name and we're in Linux, we could just go host name. Oh, studio-pc. Easy enough. Studio-pc. All right. So we could download a pre-client uh, installer, or we could just run this command. I'm kind of lazy today. Let's just run the terminal command as it should just set everything up for us. Type our password in, proceed. Uh, capital letters usually means you can just hit enter and it's gonna say yes. This is where it gets to. Is this an LVM drive or is it not? Does it not have a snapshot mechanism? Uh, I was kind of lazy when I set this one up. So sadly, I did not set it up as LVM. But uh, if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments if you wanna see an LVM uh, conversion video because I'll, I think I will want some kind of snapshots sometime in the future, but knowing me, I'll probably wipe it out anyways. But since we don't have that capabilities, we'll say no snapshot. This tells us it's not gonna do an image. All right, so we're set up, coming back into here. We're like, all right, added successfully. Let's go to your backup. Ah, perfect, okay. So we have Studio PC. This is gonna say not supported once it does its first backup. And then we get the file backup status. Now, of course, I do have uh, an entire explainer video uh, article over here that follows this. I did a couple little fun stuff on, on Twitter and it's like, hey, who, who does backups and what do you use? It was really kind of an interesting, fun thing, but 43% of people don't really use any backup. And no, I hear you in the comments, RAID is not backup. Mm -mm, I don't care. No, I don't care it's RAID 1. No, not backup. So the big thing here is adding our customizations now. Uh, since this is Linux and we aren't using LVM with images, we can just add certain directories to back up off of the system. The big one for Linux is obviously the .config. That's where all the host stuff is. Maybe even etc would be a good one to back up as that could grab a lot of or system level configuration as well. But for today, we're just going to grab our home directory uh, .config. So just my dot .files. So we're going to come back into our terminal and type this command in. And that should add our backup directory. And we should see it start to say last file backup. And let's see what happens. Let's refresh this page. Now, since this hasn't started yet, we can actually force it by doing, okay, full file backup here. Let's see if it queues and talks to our system. Uh, 
doing that system status, system CTL, we can see if that is actually working in the background or not. Uh, but as you see back here, I've already restarted it, run a status. So we know that the back end or the client back end is working. So now that this is queued, let's refresh. And there it goes. It's starting to copy over. The one improvement I would suggest on this piece of software, some way to do it in a live, it would be kind of cool to see that slider tick over. Uh, but so far, just clicking like your backup will kind of show you what it's doing in the background and uh, do that refresh for you. So that's one downside. But again, can you really complain for it being free? Now let's add uh, our pass through VM, which uses mostly our Windows games. And we're going to do a full image this time. Add another new client. And this one we're going to call, uh, let's see what our host name is of our Windows PC. I'm going to just go sysdm.cpl. This is called Win10 VM. Wow, that's real original, Chris. Uh, but it uh, should be enough to find the system and we're going to add this client to it. So let's come back here, type our win 10 VM, add client. And then on this one, we're going to download the client installer for Windows. And with that, we'll be able to grab that from our Windows box. We could take a thumb drive and just plug it in. All those things are fine. You got your backup client, win 10 VM. I will go ahead and copy that locally to my downloads folder, run that next. I agree and install this. Okay. What do we want to do? we back up all files except temporary cache. Perfect. Back up the system volume. That sounds good. Do we have any other big devices in here? One thing I will caution is if you have some really large, uh, external volumes, you might want to limit this and be like, Hey, only back up C. Uh, but since we doesn't really matter, we're going to just back up the system volume. So that should bring us into our little tray here. You can see the red, but that's okay. Just is spooling up. Let's come back to our box and our dashboard. Okay. So we can see the Win 10 VM right now it's indexing. So it's saying, Hey, what all do I need to back up here to really make this work? And since that volume is about a hundred gigs, man, what, what did I install? It must've been a game, probably cyberpunk. It's going to try and copy a hundred gigs of all of this drive. So then I could easily restore this anywhere I wanted. So let's say I wanted to go like a, a, a P to V where I take a physical and put it into a virtual. This software would actually be pretty good for that because you can take a full image of that uh, physical device and then image it into a VM, which would be kind of neat, but needless to say, let's refresh. Oh man, it is flying through that backup. Look at that. That's the file backup, but the image backup hasn't started yet. So we probably should queue up our image backup to make sure that's working. Now with this completed, we can come over here and then we're going to just say full image backup. And if you're wondering, Hey, Titus, I don't want to manually back up my system. I'm not a caveman. Don't worry. By default, it actually sets all this up for you. The intervals to actually do the file backups, it actually checks to see to do incrementals every five hours. And then if it's more than 30 hours old and that file has changed, it's going to go ahead and do a full file backup. It's not going to just do an incremental. And then it'll only count, uh, you know, as far as revisions go, you can check how many backups it's actually saving, which is cool. Same goes for image backups. Hey, it's, it's capturing these incremental image backups every seven days. Uh, and then doing uh, full backups over here, which it's only grabbing a maximum of five full backups, which is great. And if you're wondering when the backup windows are, you can see it right here. So how this is uh, set up is it's Monday through Sunday, anytime, zero through 2400. So any time of the day, it will do the backup. But let's say you only wanted to do it. You know, I only want my backups to fire off between uh, midnight and 6 a.m. I would go ahead and save this and say, hey, only do it during this portion of the day. But for me personally, I, I want my backups to just fire off whenever I don't really care. I have a pretty fast network here and doing incremental, even full image backups is not going to be much of an overhead for me. But I wanted to show the scheduling there. Now, coming back over to here, we still need to do our full image backup, which let's go ahead and queue that up and come back into our 
uh, Windows box and see kind of what it's doing because this is a pretty sizable 100 gig backup. And we can see, okay, full image backup is running, which if we look, yep. Can we give a, a little bit better status? We can actually see the logs here. So if we want to double check, hey, what is happening? Now, here's the backups. Average write is about eight megs. Well, that's not great, but that's okay. Let's uh, see if we have a bit bigger status screen. Okay. And if we right click, we could actually access it directly here from the client as well and say, hey, uh, go ahead and fire off a full image backup for me. It looks like we ran into an error, which, you know, I could edit this out, but you know what? I'm not all about that. Let's see. Starting unscheduled full image backup, error retrieving back backup. Okay. It's doing full. Great. Request image backup failed. Creating shadow copy failed. See client log files for details. And come to find out, since this is my game inbox, when I look at it and I pull up system properties, well, one dead giveaway here that this isn't going to work for a full image is I don't have any system restore. Now, this is a really stripped down version of Windows. And if we look at the process counts, I think it's like 97 and that's with everything kind of up and going. So uh, probably should go ahead and fix this. I'm going to go ahead and run a DISM restore health from a, a ISO and let's get that shadow copies back. All right. Now that we actually have a system restore doing that. We do systemdm.cpl. You can see system protection. I actually have that and it's turned on. So having shadow copies is still required by Windows because your backup leverages this. And if we go into the status of your backup, you can see it's idle and we can even push through a full image backup. Have that done, should go through and you can see its progress. So this is on the client that is doing the backup. And if we go over to our server on a different computer and we hit refresh, you can see the image backups about 8%. We actually have an already existing image in there, so that's now okay. And this is kind of how uh, Windows backup does. I would say the Windows portion is the most polished out of all of them, uh, mainly because it's probably the most used. But I'd love just having the automated file backups using just a simple system D service for a lot of my Linux boxes. So I love this. Uh, let me know what you guys think. There's some alternatives I didn't talk about, which I do consider a little bit better. You know, Borg backup. Uh, also, there's a cloud offering called Borg base. That's I think that's based off of. There's a uh, Bacula. I'm probably saying that wrong, but that's more of an enterprise. It has a really cool dashboard. So uh, if you want a little bit bigger product in the enterprise space, this is an option if you want to stay with uh, a FOSS product. And then we have other things, you know, uh, that that go into it in, in more of your traditional data centers and things that I'd use. Uh, I've also used Synology in the past uh, for a lot of backups, uh, which have syncs. So as far as backups go, there's a lot to choose from here. Uh, but your backup is kind of nice just because of the syncing or the universal availability of all this and having multiple OSs to be able to support. With that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.